Hey guys, Dan here with Hardly Breathe Programming. Today we're going to continue working on our platformer tutorial. This is episode 5 and we're going to be focusing on uh, Raycast and Collider so that we can kind of create vision for our character. I'm going to do a brief overview of what we worked on last time and then we're going to jump in and start working on some more fun stuff uh, using some physics within the 2D engine part of Unity. Uh, so first off, we talked about coroutines in the last episode. Uh, that's episode 4 or the episode 4 remake which uh, is posted today as well um, but basically we created an idle method that we had a toggle button which is just the public bool is idle that we could toggle on and off to exit out of our idle loop to attack and then go back into our idle loop uh, that works great uh, for the most part if you're if you want to control all your enemies while you're playing the game but that's not fun you kinda wanna have your enemies to have a little mind of their own whether it's a good mind or not, you want them to do some things by themselves, right? So we need to go ahead and create some basic AI. Uh, and the way that we're going to do it, there's several ways you can do AI. And AI on itself is an extremely complex subject. Um, and I recommend you guys read up on all the different ways to handle it, how bigger games handle AI and whatnot uh, if it interests you. But we're going to touch base on a few things. Uh, in this video, and we'll talk about them, and I'll demonstrate some of the ones um, that I think are pretty that you'll find in most Unity tutorials and some of your basic stuff to help you get going. Uh, but what we'll, we're going to be looking at is this slime creature today. So let me zoom in a little bit on him. You see, he has an eye, right? And we know we can use that to look. Uh, it, the eye itself isn't animated, but kind of to the player, it says, "Hey, this thing can see," right? So that means it should have some sort of vision. And that's where we're going to create the ability for this thing to see. And at that point, we want him to attack if he sees our character. Uh, there's several ways to handle uh, viewing, like uh, vision. Uh, we're going to talk about two of them. Well, we'll talk about four of them, really. Four different ways. Uh, three of them are basically the same way. It's just using different colliders. The other one is uh, using a raycast. So let's start with the Raycast first because that's the one we're not going to be using uh, in this video and then we'll go ahead and look at some more other ways that we can do it. Um, so in our creature class, we're gonna, that's what we're going to be working with again. We're going to open that up. I'm going to go into our idle method here and I'm going to be deleting some stuff. Um, and I, had I wrote some code down just so I remember it so I can refer back to it. So if you guys see my mouse go off the screen I'm just kinda of pulling up some of the the code so I remember it exactly I don't want to screw it up while we're talking about it uh, but basically the idea here is when we enter our we're gonna be staying idle for as long as the player isn't in viewing distance as soon as we view the player then we want to do something right so let's go ahead and delete these abilities and start cover team because we don't want that in our in our idle loop for now uh, the first thing that we'd like to do though is create a direction in which uh, we fire a raycast and then we actually need to create the raycast hit. So go up to the top. Uh, I'm going to create a comment up here and we're just call it raycast. And you'll see this. I'm going to comment out the raycast code on uh, the script that you guys can download. So you'll see this commented out. Make sure to go through it if you have any questions on raycast. Uh, but we're not actually going to be using it. So here's a raycast. What we need is a raycast hit, which in Unity is a raycast 2D hit. Or raycast hit 2D. Uh, basically, what this is is the information that comes back from the ray that shot. So, a ray in Unity and most game engines is a, an invisible line uh, that is shot out from some position at some angle for a certain amount of distance. And whatever that line collides with will be stored and returned in the raycast hit. Uh, the raycast hit variable uh, allows us to access that information so that we can use it however we, we want. Um, and you'll this is most commonly used in uh, first-person shooters. So if you like playing Call of Duty or Battlefield, uh, a lot of the times what they do is instead of actually launching a physical bullet out of the gun, they actually launch a raycast out of the player's head, your vision, uh, or the center of the screen. So where your reticle is, it's going to launch a raycast out. And if the raycast hits an enemy, it will report back and apply damage and do whatever their guns do, right? So it goes into the data point at that point. But they use a raycast hit a lot of the time to determine whether or not your shot on your screen was actually registered on the player that's, uh, that you're shooting at. But anyways, we're going to look at a raycast hit. So I have that there. 
and we're going to go into Unity and we're going to fire a Raycast. And the way we do that is now that we created this variable up here, actually let me go ahead and make that private. Uh, you, you don't have to create this up top, you can create it down below, you can make a, like a variable for the method, but we're just going to make it available to the whole class, just in case we want to use it elsewhere. Uh, but we're going to say Raycast hit is going to be equal to a physics 2D. Make sure it's 2D because we're using Unity 2D. So we're going to physics 2D Raycast, and there's all sorts of different types of Raycast. We're just going to use a generic Raycast. Uh, and we're going to say this dot transform, so it's going to need a position excuse me, dot position. So the Raycast method takes a position, a direction, and then it takes a distance. Uh, or like, how far is this ray gonna travel? So now we want direction, so we're gonna use a vector two left. So we want it to fire out of our player's eye. So if I go into Unity here, we see our players looking to the left, therefore we want the ray to come out the left towards our, our character over here. Uh, so once so that's left. Now we want to add a distance, and the distance that we're going to be using is a 5f. Now 5 is just a generic number. Uh, it's in unity units, however you want to view it. Uh, the 5 is going to change depending. This is where you probably want to make a constant variable up top, label it. You could actually do like a very good way to code would be private const uh, float uh, ray cast distance. I guess they normally do ray cast dist equals 5f, right? And you hit control s to save, copy that, and then get rid of the 5. That'd be a better way to handle it. So if you're coming back to code later, you got to refactor or whatever, it, it needs to be, view distance needs to be longer. You know that goes here and you can just edit the variable up top. It makes it much easier to debug. Um, so here we go. We have a raycast hit. We're telling it, hey, start on my position, which is the transform This is uh, that this script is attached to, so our green slime. So start on the green slime, shoot it left, and we're going to shoot it a distance of five unity units. Pretty simple, right? Now what we want to do though is we want to see it. So if I hit control S now and save or whatever, we're not going to see anything. It's not going to do anything in Unity. Uh, and the way we need the way we want to see it is by hitting debug.log. Or excuse me, debug dot draw ray. So we actually want to draw this ray. Uh, and we're going to say this dot transform dot position uh, direction which I'm gonna leave as DRC DR for now don't worry about it. we're gonna create that and then we're gonna say color dot red so in order to get this thing to fire it doesn't take a vector to position like uh, everything else we're gonna actually create a very another variable called uh, direction and we're gonna just gonna keep it in the loop we're gonna keep it local so we're gonna say vector uh, to direction is gonna be equal to this dot transform dot transform front or excuse me transform direction uh, vector two dot left uh, and then we're going to multiply it by the distance that we want right so this is actually going to allow us to shoot the ray in a certain this bit of code here is telling us or is going to create a vector uh, from a certain position and for a direction and then by for a certain length and the length is going to be a ray cast dist right that constant variable that we created uh, so that's why we, so we have a vector 2 here we're calling this transform which is the script that this thing is attached to uh, we're getting transform direction so basically the way it's facing uh, it's in local space to world space and then we're going to do vector 2 dot left meaning uh, it needs to go to the left and it's going to be the same length as our ray cast that we fire uh, and we're going to color it red. You can color it whatever you want. If you go color dot, uh, hit a period, you can see all the colors. We're going to do red because it tends to stand, stand out more, and hopefully you guys can see it uh, in YouTube. So now we're going to do yield, return, uh, wait for, actually, we're just going to say yield, return, null. Uh, we want this to continue. We don't want to wait for a certain amount of time, but we want to continue it as long as we're idle. So I'm going to hit control S to save. I'm going to go back into Unity. I'm going to press play. And if all goes well, we don't have any bugs. You can see we have a ray cast, right? So hopefully on the recording, you can see this green, this red line. Uh, and basically this red line is the vision of our player. Now I can't prove that to you yet because we don't have any code to prove it to you. So let me go into Visual Studio and we'll prove it. We'll make sure that this is actually working. And the way you check the the hit is we're gonna say if Raycast hit, 
which is our variable, which is this variable up here. We say if that uh, dot collider, meaning did it hit something, is not equal to null. So we want to make sure that it hit something. We're saying if the raycast hits some sort of collider, so it's not equal to null, meaning it, it hit something, and uh, the raycast hit dot collider dot game object dot name is equal to we want it to name our character object so our character robot boy is the game object name that we're looking for so that's what we're gonna place here so we're gonna say character robot boy now before we continue on if you're uh, if, if you used a lot of rays before uh, you'll know or if you've used unity for a while you'll know that this probably is not the best way to handle a search uh, and I say that because if you have a thousand game objects in your game view here, in your hierarchy, it's going to search all of those thousand objects for that one name that is character robot boy. Uh, the best way to do this would be to mask and use layers, Unity layers, and we can talk about that later as we go on. Uh, but we don't have that many objects, so it'll be a real quick search anyways. So as soon as we see, so, as soon as we hit something, some sort of collider, uh, which is attached to a game object then we're going to make sure it has robot boy at that point we're going to say debug dot log this dot game object dot name plus our two quotes spotted two t's the player otherwise if that doesn't if all that fails that means we haven't seen anything we're going to say debug dot log uh, this dot game object dot name uh, plus our two quotes again is searching so if we didn't hit a collider and that collider that we do hit, we don't hit is not named character robot boy then we're gonna say hey we're still searching for something so hit control to save go back into unity and hit play uh, and you'll see our raycast here and if you watch me as our we're searching right now right and as I move our character as soon as I hit the ray we're gonna say, oh, we spotted the player. So already we have some sort of AI. It doesn't make sense, it's not really doing anything, but we have vision, right? And that's important because we want to view things. Uh, now now that you see this though, there's an issue that I want to address, and the reason why we're not gonna use Raycast, uh, because if I jump, the player doesn't, it's still, he doesn't see anything. So I have to hit this Raycast directly, right? In order for the enemy to see anything. So technically I could jump over the player or the enemy and never get caught. Uh, that might be functionality you want, but that's not what we want. One way to fix that is you could launch multiple raycasts. So you could have one coming out at an angle, up top, in the back. You could do like five raycasts uh, and keep track of all of them. Uh, but we're going to use a box. We're going to use a collider because a collider uh, is just as simple, and we can kind of customize them the way we want. I just want to show you guys how raycasts work, so you can use them in your own projects. So hopefully, you understand. If you got questions, again, leave them down in the comments below. I'll try to answer them in the next video. Uh, but before this video gets insanely long, let's go ahead and talk about the next thing. I'll actually, we're already at 13 minutes. So in episode six, we'll talk more about the next, uh, the colliders and stuff we're, we're going to be using. Uh, but I did want to cover what we'll be doing. So we're going to be using a box collider. I'm going to turn it on. Uh, so when you input a uh, creature here, when you input a script, uh, a sprite, it doesn't come with a collider, right? It doesn't do anything. There's nothing on it. So what we need to check is add component, or what we need to do is go to add component. So I'm on the green slime here, and we're gonna go to physics 2D, and we're gonna add a collider. Now you have a circle collider, box collider, edge collider, polygon, spring, all these different things that you could use. We're gonna use a box collider for now. If you go over here, you see size. You can expand it, make it bigger, do whatever you want with it. Uh, what I like doing, is, or what we're going to do, is make it like even number. We'll say 5. Uh, we'll go 4. And we'll say 7. So these are just very generic numbers, right? So this box, this green box, hopefully, again, you can see it on YouTube, will be our vision. But it doesn't make sense because, one, he sees the same as much as he sees forward and back, which that doesn't make sense. Two, he can see below the platform. We don't want to do that. So we want to use these offsets here, the X offset to adjust it right so he sees more up front than behind so maybe he feels or something that someone's behind him but he sees farther out front and then we want to adjust the Y offset up to just under him so basically his view of vision goes from here out up and over right that's the way we're gonna be doing it 
and the the other I'll talk about the other two ways we're gonna do it and then we'll work on the code in the next video uh, so you could do it that way the other way you can do it is with a polygon collider and I actually created a prefab for this so let me bring it up I'm gonna attach it to It's not working. Okay. Well, I'll just bring it in. So here we have another sprite I made, right? It's just a black uh, cone looking thing. Uh, and this, the idea of this was to make a collider out of it. So we have this thing called a polygon collider. Uh, so if I go to add component in the inspector, I'm on the vision thing here. And this will also be available for you to download. If you go to physics 2D, you have a polygon collider. And if I hit that, it creates a collider of polygons. So this kind of creates a more vision type of thing right it, it's more of a shape of vision you can make it bigger if you want uh, and then you can actually just turn off the sprite renderer so it's just a collider itself so now you can attach that to the green slime and as the green slime moves he has vision right that's one way to do it uh, and the, the cool thing about the the polygon collider is you see it has so many elements into it if you want to edit it you click edit and you can go in here and you can kind of customize it and delete it and, and do, do what you want with it. Make it bigger, make it a, a different shape. I don't recommend doing that just because uh, you want to avoid a ton of polygons here. Uh, but you can go ahead and edit and try to get rid of a few. I, I was playing around with it earlier and I actually got rid of uh, several uh, of the elements here. So I just, see I just got rid of, I, I don't know, probably five or six. But if you go ahead and edit it, you can get you can get the shape to be a little bit better uh, and eliminate a lot of the little points here that are not, not necessary. There we go. And you can expand it. You can kind of customize the shape that you want. All right. So if that's the shape more you want, then you can do that. Um, that's one way to do it. We're not going to do that. We're going to use the square. But if you'd like to do that, I just want to go ahead and show you how that works. Uh, the other way to do it, let me go ahead and, and delete vision. The way, the last way we'll talk about it is, and again, with the sphere collider, you go physics, add a or circle, excuse me, add a circle. This kind of has a more rounded vision range. So if you make the radius a bit bigger, you can adjust it so that it looks more forward. Uh, the only problem with this I don't like is that again it has the viewing part on the bottom. Yeah, you could raise it up, but then he sees more up top than outward. I don't know if you can. You might be able to. No, I was gonna say you might be able to make elliptical out of it, but I don't eclipse. Uh, but I don't think you can. So, uh, or an oval. So, any, anyways, I, I wanted to show you the guys the colliders. We're gonna be using the box collider, like I talked about. Uh, it's very simple, and we'll get into the code in the next video. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this uh, episode five. In the next video, we'll talk about the programming and how we're gonna use uh, the on trigger methods for our box collider for vision. Uh, but until next time, I hope you guys have a good day, and I'll talk to you later.